wrote a book with the title Don't Eat the Marshmallows Yet. Yes. What has it to do with marshmallows? Well, it's based on an experiment that was done at the University of Stanford in California by an American psychologist. He took 643 children, one by one, put them in a room with a marshmallow in front of the child. And he would tell the child, Johnny or Mary, I'm going to be leaving the room for 15 minutes. If when I come back, the marshmallow is here, you'll get two. To tell a four-year-old child to wait 15 minutes to get two is equivalent to tell you we're going to have coffee in three hours. It's a long time. So what happens? When the psychology leaves the room, two out of three ate the marshmallow. Five seconds, 10 seconds, 20 seconds, 30 seconds, a minute, two minutes, some 10 minutes, but they ate the marshmallow. One out of three, 33% of the kids would look at the marshmallow and go like this. They would smell it, put it back. Some of them understood that they have no willpower, so instead of looking at the marshmallow, they would distract their attention with uh, the walls, with the uh, skirt, with the shirt, they would think about something else so that they would not eat it. So one out of three. At the end of the 15 minutes, the marshmallow was there. So the psychologist would give them a shirt. Fifteen years later, follow-up study. What did they find? 100% of the children that did not eat the marshmallow were successful. Their entrance exam at the university was 215 points higher than the kids that ate the marshmallows. So we can deduct that the most important principle for success is self-discipline or the ability to delay gratification. So that's why it's called don't eat the marshmallow. It's been done with chocolate, with toys, but I thought marshmallow would be a good title for the book. With the marshmallow concept, you praise classical virtues like self-discipline, willpower, modesty, honesty. Do we need these qualities now um, more than ever? More than ever now. More than ever now because the world is now going through a difficult period. Right now, we find that, uh, that almost every country in the world is going through a, an economical crisis. So now we have to go back to the basics more than ever. Now countries must understand they have to be more effective, they have to work more together, they have to be more productive, they have to spend less money, they have to, uh, to, to, to save more so that they can invest in infrastructure. So now more than ever the marshmallow principle is a very important principle. There's a place for short-term thinking. What we are saying is that you cannot place all your bets in short-term thinking. You have, to, you have to understand that for you to have more later, you have to do some things today. You have to sacrifice today. You have to, to, to sacrifice because if you don't, you'll regret. When the time comes, you will regret that you did not sacrifice. So now more than ever, you need to balance what you do. You know, have fun, spend your money, go out, but get a little bit and put it in your bank. You know, don't spend it all. And don't go into debt. Tell us something about the main characters in your book. Okay. I have two main characters in my book. One's called Jonathan. He's very rich. And one's called Arthur. He's a chauffeur. And I wanted to write a book in a way that people would understand it and that people would have fun. So I modeled the characters. I am the very rich guy, although not that rich as in the book. Okay, but I'm the one that is well off. And then the the uh, the chauffeur, I modeled after my grandfather, who used to have money, but he spent it all. He would spend everything. So those two characters, one, they're both smart, they're both intelligent, but one is, has money and the other one doesn't. So the one that doesn't, which is the chauffeur, will ask the uh, the uh, the uh, the uh, rich person, how come if we're pretty similar? You got money and I don't. So the whole book is this rich guy, which is Jonathan, teaching Arthur the secrets for success. And those secrets that I discussed in that book work. 
because I spent my whole life studying human behavior and putting those principles into work can change a person's life. Jonathan is head of a media company that offers sales trainings. Why did you choose for him this profession? I, I chose that profession because I, uh, several reasons. Number one, I used to be with Xerox. I was a, I was a psychologist and then I was hired by Xerox and I went to their industrial psychology division called Xerox Learning Systems. There, I came into touch with very, very uh, effective sales technology from Harvard University. And that opened a new world for me, using psychology to persuade, persuasion. So, uh, and also based on the fact that there's so many salespeople that need help, that I said, you know what, let's make this character someone that has to do with selling because it's such an important profession and I know it very well. How can training providers in particular benefit from the marshmallow concept? Uh, the, the concepts that I discuss in the marshmallow book are very practical and very easy to implement. Let me give you one right now which has to do with marshmallow concept. Let's say that I am the salesperson and I go to your company and you tell me, Joaquin, I want product A. Do you have it? And I say to you, yes, I have product A. Uh, can you deliver it by Friday? And I say, yeah, yeah, I can deliver it by Friday. Okay, I want 10 of them. So, okay, sign here, 10, deliver Friday. If I did that, I ate the marshmallow. But I should have said, okay, you want product A. And... Pr This is a good product, and I have it in stock. But let me ask you, what kind of problems are you having that you think this product will, will be of help to you? What kind of problems do you think this will solve? That question alone will get you to talk about what kind of problems you have, what situations. And by me asking the questions and providing answers, I might go with an order for A, B, C, D. Case in point, I was called by a company called Verizon and uh, they wanted a time management seminar, okay? Let's say that's $10,000 on a Friday. If I would have said yes, okay, I'm available, let's go. How many people? 20. Sign here, I'm done. I made $10,000. But if I said what I did, Mr. Cuevas, I do a very good time management seminar. It's very effective. Well, let me ask you, what kind of problems are you having in the telephone company that you think a time management session a seminar will solve and that question alone took me to several meetings you know how much was the order for 1.2 million dollars just because I understood the marshmallow principle the message of your book and your keynotes is very simple follow long term objectives don't settle for short term games do you gains do you think that this simplicity Is one of the reasons why your topic is so popular? Exactly, exactly. I could have done this book in a very complicated manner. I could have used psychological terms that are not well understood. My objective was to get this information in an interesting, entertaining, and effective way to as many people as I could. And luckily it's in 20 languages and now we welcome Germany into the book. You created a whole identity, a kind of global brand of, out of this uh, idea. Yes. How did you manage to do this? Yes. Yes. Well, uh, uh, first of all, by being a public speaker, I would speak in many places and the word would get around that the book was very good because my speech is very interesting also. So people would buy the book, that they would recommend it, and then something magical happened. The book was taken to Frankfurt. Germany, the Frankfurt Book Fair, the largest book fair in the world, and people fell in love with the book. It's now in 20 languages. By people falling in love with the book, it got widespread uh, distribution, and then I helped a little bit with social media, Facebook, Twitter, uh, LinkedIn, you know, uh, getting interviewed like you are now, going to television programs. So a lot of marketing, that all helps. 
what can speakers learn from you? What uh, kind of advice would you give them? For example, how should they choose that topic? I would, I would tell a speaker that they have to choose a topic that they're passionate about. They must love it. They must feel for it, and they must know it. They must have the knowledge about the topic. But they have to think at all times, what problems will I be solving for my client? What will I do for my client to make her life easier? And then I have to speak about that. And of course, I tell every speaker that if you want to make it further down, you know, further up in this career, you need a book. You need, you need to publish a book. So, so a speaker with a book can do a very, very powerful speech and he can leave himself behind or herself behind in a book and that will get him more business.